All right, we're into our last section in the second topic, all about the cell cycle. And this part we're focusing on cell differentiation and stem cells. So here's the study design link. The key learning intention is the idea that stem cells allow for cell differentiation and specialization. And at the end of this section, you should be able to define those two keywords. Define stem cell and describe the different types of stem cells and their potencies, which we'll learn about. And demonstrate how we can use stem cells in medicine, which is a growing area and constantly developing. So cell differentiation is the first big idea. It's the idea that all multicellular organisms, we're not just a ball of all the same type of cells. We need our cells to do different jobs. And that's what specialized cells are, cells with a specific function. And differentiation or cell differentiation is just the process of our cells becoming specialized as we develop from a single fertilized egg as we grow as an embryo. And it's stem cells that do differentiation, which we'll learn about in this section. So here's a whole lot of different types of cells that all come from these original group of stem cells in the agar dish here. So what actually are stem cells? Well, they're undifferentiated cells. So they're not committed to being a particular type of cell like a skin cell, but they have the ability to differentiate into other specialized cells. And it's a one way process. Once a stem cell has differentiated and become a specialized cell, they can't go back again. So here's an example. We've got a little stem cell at the top here it receives some chemical signals from itself or some other cells and it differentiates and specializes into a particular type of cell like a muscle or a nerve cell. The most important thing for our bodies is that we have a huge supply of stem cells so that we can constantly repair and make new cells for all our different types of tissues. And that's the idea of self-renewal. So self-renewal is when stem cells divide during mitosis. And let's have a look at this diagram and see what happens. So we start off with our original stem cell. It goes through the cell cycle, it goes through mitosis, and now we've got two daughter cells. But one of those daughter cells stays as a stem cell, and it's the other one that becomes specialized, like a skin cell. And then that stem cell is free to divide again, still have a stem cell, and then a specialized cell. And then it happens again and happens again. So at the end, we've still got our one stem cell, but we've made four little specialized cells ready to go off and be a skin cell or to be whatever they need to do. So this means there's always a constant supply of stem cells for our body. And now these cells are ready and we always have stem cells so that we can grow, we can replace tissue that is dead or past its use by date and we can repair damage. So the next question is where are stem cells actually found? In the body and you can collect them and they're found in two places either in the early embryo or in the late embryo or an adult or a child as well so anywhere after the early embryo so embryonic stem cells come from the early embryo you can see here we start off with our one single egg being fertilized by a sperm and then mitosis happens and the embryo is starting to develop you can collect any of these stem cells and they count as being an embryonic stem cell. You can, scientists can also use unfertilized eggs and they can modify them and they become a stem cell still and they'll grow into a few types of cells. That's called a parthenote. There are other stem cells that you can collect from the late embryo or the fetus or an adult and they're called somatic stem cells. Somatic tissue is just tissue that's not sperm or eggs, so normal body tissue. So we're going to take a side step here, and these are all some key words to explain how many different types of cell that a stem cell can become. So not all stem cells can actually go on and become every cell type. They're, some of them are limited to how many they can how many types of cells they can become. And this is called potency. So potency is just how many cell types a stem cell can differentiate into. 
So let's look at the first category of stem cells. These are called totipotent. And toti just means total. So this is the one type of stem cell that actually can become every other type of cell needed to grow a human or any other animal. So the key for totipotent stem cells, they have to be collected in the first five days when the embryo has only got up to 16 cells at the most. If you wait beyond that, all these cells start to become a little bit specialized and they're not totipotent anymore. But if you do collect them that early, they and you regrow them, they can literally become a full human body, including the umbilical cord and the placenta. So they've got the full amount of genes that are activated. All the genes are activated. Every other type of stem cell, they don't use all their genes, so they can't become every type of cell. The next type of stem cells are embryonic stem cells, which we mentioned earlier, and they are pluripotent. Plural, pluri, like the word plural, so it means many. These type of stem cells can become many potential different types of cells, just not all of them. So they have to be collected from uh, the later than 16 cells stage. It's still pretty early in um, the life cycle of an embryo and they come from this middle section here. Um, and the structure of the cells at this stage is called a blastocyst. So they collect those little cells in the middle and those cells can grow into becoming any part of the human body. They just can't grow into a placenta or an umbilical cord. So you couldn't implant one of them using an IVF procedure and it wouldn't grow into a full baby. The next type of stem cells are the somatic stem cells, which we mentioned earlier. And somatic stem cells are multipotent. Obviously the word multi means multiple. So these stem cells can turn into multiple lots of cells, but not a whole human body. They are collected, like we mentioned earlier, from adult body tissue. They're actually really hard to find. Um, so inside the bone marrow there are some, in particular layers in the liver and lower down in the skin but it's really individual layers within organs. So it's really hard to actually extract and find these stem cells. They can differentiate into several types of cells, like I said. So a classic multipotent stem cell is blood stem cells, which is found in the bone marrow. And they can differentiate into all the different types of blood cells, like red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets as well. I mentioned a few areas where you can find somatic stem cells. There's a few in the brain and the surface of the eye. I mentioned the skin, they're in the intestines, the bone marrow and the muscles as well. Okay, the last category are oligopotent and unipotent stem cells. Oligo just means a few and uni obviously means one, like a unicycle. So these so oligopotent stem cells can turn into a few different types of cells, but they're pretty much almost specialized already. And unipotent are already specialized. They just basically develop a little bit further. So oligopotent, nearly specialized, unipotent. Um, they're specialized, but they're not mature, basically. So going back to blood cells, um, when we begin with our initial blood stem cell, which would be multipotent, found in the bone marrow, like I mentioned, it begins to specialize and it specializes into some other types of stem cells. So here's one here, which is a myeloid stem cell. And then that only can specialize into red blood cells or platelets. It's only really only got two options. So we'd call that myeloid stem cell oligopotent. It can then become two other types, but it's still locked into pretty much being those type of cells. And then the um, lymphoid blast down here, that's the stem cell for making these white blood cells. So we'd call that one unipotent. 
Okay, that's all the different categories stem cells. But the fascinating part about them is this whole area of using stem cells in medicine. The, probably the name of the area is regenerative medicine. So essentially that means we're using stem cells, taking them out either from the patient or the donor, and then putting them back in and trying fixing and curing different diseases. So it's still potential at the moment. We can do this a little bit, but hopefully in the next 50 years, our technology progresses and we can really use them to start curing some horrible diseases. Here's a typical example. So we extract the stem cells from the patient. Ideally, it's from that same patient because then they have the exact same genetics and there aren't any issues um, with, the, with a donor cell being rejected. Then they grow the cells in the lab, grow more stem cells, um, so we have a big supply. And then essentially they just inject the stem cells into the area that needs repairing. And hopefully those stem cells start to divide and make brand new cells to repair whatever damage there is. Like um, cells in someone's spine here, um, or red, white blood cells for immune diseases, whatever it is. Here are some of the amazing ways that we can use these stem cells in regenerative medicine. So those embryonic stem cells that you get from the five days roughly uh, blastocyst, they can be used for a few different things. Remember that they're pluripotent, they can develop into pretty much most of the cells of a human. So essentially what we do is we can use the frozen embryos from IVF clinics that aren't being used. So when a couple goes and does IVF, they get a whole lot of egg cells um, and they fertilize them in the lab. And there's a lot of embryos that they don't actually put back into the woman to try and grow into a baby. There's just a whole lot of them that will otherwise just die. So they're unwanted and they can be used for research. Uh, the issue with this is there's a whole lot of ethical and moral dilemmas. So bioethics is gonna be a big topic for us this year. It's all about what is right or wrong in biology. So do we think as a society and do you believe as a society that we can, we should be using embryos um, and taking their cells out and using them for research? So like I mentioned, embryonic stem cells are pluripotent. Um, the disadvantage is that if you take out some of these cells and then put them in a different patient's body, they might be rejected. Another option for regenerative medicine is using those adult stem cells, which are also somatic stem cells. They're multipotent, so still can turn into quite a few different types of cells. The advantage, if you take some of your own stem cells, and then grow them and put them back into a diseased area, the advantage is that it's your own cells and they're not gonna have any rejection from the immune system. The disadvantage though is that they're only multipotent, so they can't specialize into every single type of cell, which we might need. One classic treatment that we've been doing for decades now is bone marrow transplants. And this is a type of adult stem cell therapy. So this happens for people that have cancer in the bone marrow or some other diseases and um, they can't make blood cells because that's where all their blood cells get made. So they essentially clear out the patient's bone marrow, then they extract bone marrow from a different donor. Here they are doing it here. It's a really painful procedure. So people that do it are extremely generous. They take out the bone marrow tissue and essentially fill up the, the patient's bone marrow with this brand new, fill up their bones with this brand new bone marrow. And it's full of stem cells, full of those multipotent stem cells. And ideally, they're gonna start making all the blood cells that the person needs um, to cure their cancer or any other disease that they have. Another amazing area is called induced pluripotent stem cells. IPSCs. So for this one, they scientists can take specialized cells 
Um, skin cells is one thing that they've tested it on. They actually only discovered this one in about 2006 for skin cells. They take these specialized cells. Remember, normally we can't, cells can't go back once they've become specialized. But the scientists figured out they can change some genes, they can add some proteins, and they're essentially reprogramming those skin cells to go back to being a pluripotent stem cell. And then they can give further chemicals and cause those stem cells to grow into particular types of cells that we need to try and treat someone. So the advantages for induced stem cells is we don't have to kill any embryos to get these cells. So there's a huge advantage ethically. And again, you can use cells of the same patient, so we're not going to have any um, issues with the cells being rejected. All right, so here's our learning intentions again. You should be able to define cell specialization and differentiation, define stem cell and describe those different types of cell potencies, and then demonstrate how we can use stem cells in medicine through all those therapies that we talked about. Okay, bring in any questions, make a note of things you want to ask more about, and we'll talk about them in class.